good morning, everybody. I have great, great pleasure in welcoming you to this uh, monthly meeting. This is a very important monthly meeting in uh, more than uh, one way. Of course, number one, this is uh, we are going to celebrate uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Salim Ali's 125th uh, anniversary. And uh, of course, there's going to be a uh, talk by Tara Gandhi about the book she has written about uh, Salim Ali's uh, radio talks. Uh, the second thing is uh, amazing work done by the MLS, um, by the urban wildlife volunteers. Um, I was going through the bulletin. I was so happy and this is going to be, I am very sure that uh, a game changer for the youth of uh, Chennai city, if not Tamil Nadu. The enthusiasm with which uh, the students have joined and have contributed to this project is uh, simply astounding. And uh, I think uh, what uh, the uh, road the MNS is taking is what our uh, uh, founders like secretary, Mr. the previous secretary, Mr. Vijay Rajan and the president and everybody uh, would have uh, wished us to take. That is the second thing. And third thing is, of course, um, I must congratulate Mr. Uh, uh, Venkatesh, who has been uh, instrumental in bringing a large amount of money uh, to MNS to take uh, this project forward. I don't want to uh, tell you how much money he has got. Probably Vijay will be uh, talking about it. But uh, I wish to congratulate Mr. Uh, Venkatesh on behalf of everybody. Uh, for doing this uh, uh, yeoman service to uh, Yamanas. Thank you very much, Mr. Vegetation. Having said that, I, I don't want to take too much time uh, stand between you and uh, the speaker today, Tara Gandhi. Uh, it's very appropriate that uh, uh, Tara Gandhi is talking about Dr. Salim Ali on the occasion of uh, 125th uh, anniversary in Madras Naturalist Society monthly meeting because. Uh, MNSS association with Salim Ali goes uh, quite a long way. Uh, we were formed in 1978, uh, but one year later, when we brought out the souvenir, that was when first uh, we wrote as a society uh, a letter to Salim Ali asking for a message for the souvenir. And of course, you know the story. Uh, Dr. Salim Ali wrote back saying that uh, when one year is too short a time for a society uh, to be asking for a message. I mean, or words to that effect. Uh, but anyway, he um, congratulated us. And then uh, he said, uh, if you uh, survive for five years at least, then uh, we can have a better interaction. And uh, to cut a long story short, after um, five years, he definitely uh, sent a congratulatory message saying that uh, uh, wishing us uh, all the prosperity and uh, his good wishes. And I sincerely believe that the good wishes that was given by Salimani on the uh, on the occasion of five years of MNS has brought us uh, to this stage today. In uh, Salimani's uh, visit, as I know of, uh, which can be connected with the MNS is uh, 1981. 1981, uh, he came to uh, Chennai along with a, a group of uh, uh, BNHS uh, bigwigs, Dr. Daniel, I think, Dr. Uh, Grubb, and uh, uh, other people who have been uh, there. Uh, so three, four people came along with him. I think they were passing on to uh, Point Calimere, the research station uh, that had been uh, recently established. Dr. Salim had a, uh, Ali had a habit of going and uh, looking at the research station uh, personally, uh, every once in a while. So that was one. That was when uh, we arranged a meeting. So, uh, uh, Doctor, uh, our uh, world president, Mr. Ramakrishna, arranged a meeting at the Hotel Chola, and uh, our a yeah, few of the MNS members got to meet him and take him to uh, Theosophical Society, I think, and then. Uh, uh, the Adair River Estuary, Santaram, I think, was there with him, uh, took him to Adair River Estuary. And uh, thereby, a long relationship with Dr. Salim Ali and MNS uh, was uh, formed. And uh, on this occasion, I remember that uh, 
uh, uh, Mr. Harry Miller of Indian Express interviewed Salim Ali, and uh, that was broadcast. Uh, <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, we don't have a recording of that. I think maybe Tara Gandhi, like she dug up the uh, recordings from uh, All India Radio of uh, Salim Ali's talks. She can dig up this uh, uh, talk also, this interview also. Uh, that will be a very nice thing. Uh, uh, for the Madras Natural Society as well as the people uh, who are uh, interested in uh, Salim Ali's uh, talks. And again in 1983, he visited uh, uh, Chennai and uh, along with, I think, Dr. Perrins of uh, Edward Gray Institute in uh, UK. Uh, and then we had a talk in uh, CP Art Centre and which was open for uh, MLS, all the MLS members and the public at large. So the public of uh, Chennai city and the MLS members had a wonderful uh, uh, opportunity of interacting with uh, Dr. Salim Ali. So that's, of course, of course, you know, I think uh, Tara Gandhi, uh, he would have come on a private visit after 1983, where he would have uh, met Tara Gandhi, uh, who was working on uh, her uh, project under, uh, directly under Dr. Salim Ali. So I think Tara Gandhi will probably cl clarify on that. So, uh, what I am trying to say is uh, the association of Madras Natural Society goes a long way uh, with Dr. Salim Ali and uh, we are very, very happy to be uh, celebrating this 125th anniversary of uh, Dr. Salim Ali and, uh, and we are extremely happy that one of our uh, leading members, Tara Gandhi, is going to bring out a book on the uh, Salim Ali's lectures. So, thank you. Uh, and then uh, Tara Gandhi, I think you can uh, continue your uh, uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Sudhakar, and thank you so very much, MNS, for inviting me today for this. Uh, for, for this meeting. Uh, I can't tell you what a huge honor it is for me to actually be uh, uh, presenting uh, a talk in commemoration of Salim Ali's 125th uh, birth anniversary, which happened two days ago. And I'm so, I'm so delighted that, you know, with the help of uh, two or three different organizations that uh, this book, I'm very happy to show it to you, it's called Words for Birds, and it's, it's a compilation. It's not my book. I can't say it's my book. I only edited it, but uh, because it's all the words of Dr. Salim Ali, who, um, gave, who gave radio talks uh, from 1941 right up to 1985. And this is actually not very well known. So it was, um, you know, a very a wonderful uh, uh, experience for me to have discovered these. It was like almost like discovering a treasure, you know, you suddenly find a treasure and then you say, oh my gosh, what an amazing um, thing I have that has come out. And unfortunately, you see most of the people who were associated with Dr. Salim Ali uh, during his, his younger days, they've all passed on. So there was nobody, there's hardly any you know, oral history uh, about him, except now the people who are still uh, living and some of his students like myself who, uh, who, who had the privilege of uh, being uh, taught by him. Um, but so anyhow, this was wonderful. And it is so, and I really have, I must thank the BNHS uh, for, have, first I must thank All India Radio for having uh, uh, spread Dr. Salim Ali's uh, words and Dr. Salim Ali's uh, thoughts over 40 years. They did that. Then uh, the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library have actually stored all his files. So that's why I'm going through. So, Umesh, may I request you to, to share the presentation? Uh, yes, yes, Tara, just one second. Thank you. So it's really been a journey of, of, for me personally, you know, of a great uh, joy and excitement and, uh, and learning. There's so much to learn. Every word of Dr. Salim Ali is, is so uh, uh, full of wisdom. So here's another just a picture of the cover and 
Uh, this is actually a picture of Salim Ali as a young man. You can't recognize him without his beard and uh, without his usual, um, uh, you know, he, his, his usual image is of a person with a, with a beard and all that. And the man, the picture of his man when he is uh, actually climbing up hills and mountains. Yeah, next one, please. Yeah. Uh, can I just request uh, participants to put their mics on uh, mute, please? Just one, one second, sir. Yeah, you can go on, Umesh. Yes. So the, the, the interesting part is that Dr. Salim Ali, this is the more familiar Salim Ali. So we are familiar with Dr. Salim Ali as India's bird man, the greatest Indian ornithologist, the man who studied almost every species of bird over the whole subcontinent of India, and that he believed in, it, he was a great intellectual, he was a great scientist, he brought in you know, interdisciplinary studies in his ornithology, he just didn't stick to bird, but he brought in ecology, geography, zoology, entomology, even economics into the study of, uh, of birds. And he, he, he made a bird study itself an important through both. Yeah. So yes, please, next. Uh, Tara, just one second. Yeah. Uh, Vijay, I am having some issues with recording. Can I request to a couple of you to also start recording parallelly, please? Vijay, are you there? Yeah, I've started recording, yes, sir. Oh, okay. uh, you're, you're doing it? Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, I'm having some issues. It's going on and off. So you just continue till the end. Okay? Also going on prompting to say recording is in session. Yes, correct. Okay, fine. So you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so incompetent at uh, this in, at uh, IT that I'm asking somebody else to do this work for me. So this is, there's a pile of the books that he's written. Just look at that apart from Book of Indian Birds. It's like a pile of books he's written over the years. And we know all these books, Birds of Sikkim, Kerala, uh, hill birds and then and, and then fall of a sparrow which was his uh, the fall of a sparrow which was his autobiography and I'll come to that about how the history of that as well uh, next please and uh, Dylan Ripley along with him he brought out this 10 volume magnum opus uh, which is still the go-to uh, reference for uh, anybody you know actually if you want to learn if you if you see a bird you identify uh, you, you get a lot about lot of information out of the new books that have come out. But eventually, if you want to know much more about his nesting habits, you want to know a little bit more about uh, its, uh, its, uh, uh, the, the time it takes for the eggs to incubate, it, so much detail goes into, uh, into this handbook. In the handbook, there's so much detail. And all the local languages in which the name, the bird is known, it's, it's incredible. So... Yeah, I mean, apart from even including measurements, measurements of, of all the body parts of each bird, it's a phenomenal uh, book of a uh, 10-volume uh, collection of books. And it's, I don't know how they did this work between the two of them, um, but that's how it uh, happened through this great friendship, which came about from Dr. Salim Ali's first book. Yeah, next, please. Then, of course, we also know that Salim Ali was honored by the Indian government and by uh, he got Padma Vibhushan and he also got so many other awards from international awards, the Paul Getty Award. It was a, it was a lot of money which he completely donated to BNHS and built up that institution. So we know Salim Ali like this, that he was a, that, uh, you know, as a scientist, as an institution builder, as a teacher, uh, and all that, but yes, please, next one. Yeah, but this collection of his radio talks actually gives us one other aspect of this. You know, he's like a diamond, so many facets to his personality. And this facet of his personality hadn't come out uh, so well till, you know, uh, uh, as of now, uh, so many people are still surprised. They ask me, oh, did he really give these talks? I said, I mean, yeah, this, this was, it's true. He has himself recorded them. So it, he comes through as this communicator, as this educator, as this person who had this great desire to reach out to people of all walks of life. 
Now, look at the radio. No, those days, I'm talk we're talking about 1940s to 1980s, TV hadn't come up as yet. So which was the most powerful when you, when you attend a conference or you talk to people or you have a meeting, at the most you can reach out to about 100, 200 people. But if you go to the radio, how many people is thousands of people are reading out, you're reaching out to. And those of us who remember the 60s, 70s, the radio used to be on almost all day in our houses, you know? So it was such a powerful communication tool. So you could see that Dr. Salim Ali, he actually um, used this tool to communicate. And, and, it's, and this, this series of radio talks is, is so uh, amazing that he covers such a huge uh, range of topics, you know? And apart from the magazines, the articles that he wrote and the scientific papers that he wrote and the books that he wrote, this was one more method with which he used for communicating science in a simple way to, uh, to, the, to the lay public. So, and it is also filled with humor. Like for instance, he says, he refers to himself, you know, I look like a khaki clad garage mechanic. Or he would talk about himself. See, somebody said that, oh, uh, Salim, Salim Sahib, you look like a bird yourself because he was short, he's a small made man, those who remember him. And he was very slim and small and he had very quick movements. So they said that you look like a bird. So he said, no, no, maybe it's because I sing so sweetly. You know, he's talking, he used to make fun of himself. And actually he had a very crackly kind of a voice, very crackly and uh, <laughs> he didn't have a, a musical voice at all, but he would make fun of himself like that. And he writes all this, or he talks about all this, which is, which is uh, extraordinary. Yeah, next please. Then he believed in public opinion. Now that is, as he, just see how contemporary he was. And we're talking about 50 years ago, he was so contemporary to say that unless there's public opinion, unless there's public opinion, no, no cons conservation can't really happen. You, know, you can have a law, you can have, a, uh, uh, you can have various programs, but there has to be public participation. There has to be public involvement. Like all of us, like MNS and uh, other nature groups, we are all part of people who, who have learned from public opinion. And it's our, our opinion also uh, is important. So he believed in that as a scientist, he believed public opinion is important for conservation. And that was again, a very contemporary thing, almost like citizen science. Nowadays, we talk about citizen science as a, as a, as a way of conservation. And he really talked about that in those days. So his, you know, he, 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 he was, uh, and he used to, he could communicate with, you know, politicians, uh, royal families, the royal families, they, they set aside their, uh, their uh, hunting preserves. They made those into sanctuaries uh, because he said so, he told them to. So he was so influential, you know, with his, his communication. He could communicate with uh, scientists, senior executives, politicians, and children. Now, what is very interesting about this, in, in this collection of, 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 uh, um, of uh, radio talks is that many of them are for children. And, and it's even for children who can't understand English. So he has actually spoken in Hindustani. So one of them is in Hindustani. It talks about birds nests and it is, it's pretty fascinating, very nice the way he, simple language he uses and makes people so interested. So there's a nice quote from Professor Madhav Gadgil about Dr. Salim Ali, who says that he taught Indians to appreciate, to study at first hand, to treasure, and to work towards conserving the rich living heritage of this country. And this is about Salim Sahib, Salim Ali by Professor Madhav Gadgil, a famous ecologist of our times. Yeah, please. Next one. Yes. So another outreach he had was he, gave, he attended international conference. Now this, this picture of this conference is, 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 is the first Ramza conference the first Ramza conference on wetlands, and he attended that. And look at all the heads of uh, you know different countries who represented over there. And Dr. Salim Ali is in the center, and he represented India. So this is the kind of uh, way in which he worked towards conservation, and not just you know study study, but he 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 spread it, and he made policy changes, and he made things happen. And uh, he, so his outreach 
uh, included all that as well. Yes, please. So now a little bit of how uh, this happened, uh, this collection happened. And I, as I mentioned before, this has been a journey of learning and discovery. And having been a student, I, I had the direct experience of uh, his wisdom and his teaching also of his very severe scoldings when I went, when I really went very wrong very often. And uh, it was, it was, it, it, it was an exceptional uh, teacher to have because he could he could criticize you so badly that uh, that I would be completely shaken with his the with the vehemence of criticism and and as soon as you changed you made made the right changes and and corrected yourself he would give this wonderful pat on the back with a lovely letter to say okay you've done well so this was the kind of uh, uh, learning experience it was uh, for me personally. And as I said before, I have to thank uh, all the people who are involved in this. Some of my friends also helped um, with uh, their reminiscences and which I was able to put into the introduction and acknowledgement of this thing. So, yeah. And yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. That's right. So now he himself says, uh, Dr. Salimari himself says in his first lecture, of the first talk that he gave, one of the first talks that he gave, that, the, that his purpose, he, he describes his purpose as like this, that the object of these talks is really to interest listeners in the first instance for the healthy pleasure and satisfaction of bird watching, rather than for its intrinsic scientific possibilities. So that's what he feels, that he had this tremendous desire to make people understand that birds have a crucial place in nature's cyclic processes, that they are beneficial to agriculture and they can contribute to the country's economic economics. And all this he puts in very powerful uh, language uh, in his talks. Yeah, please. And if, in fact, his first talk, he says, uh, he talks about birds as a national asset. And this talk was given in 1941 before independence and uh, before in, during, uh, during uh, in, in undivided India where he, he goes to Lahore and their All India Radio is in, in Lahore. And he gives his very first talk. He must have been about 45, 46 at that time. And he talks about birds being a national asset that we have to remember that they are not just beautiful creatures, but they are a national asset. So here's just a sample of uh, the actual script. You know, he would type it out in his own old fashioned typewriter. And he had this lovely calligraphic handwriting and he would make little corrections on the side, you know, cutting, cutting out and inserting and deleting and all that. And then, and in a very meticulous way, he would write down the date, the time, and the recording station where uh, this was done. And he also make little notes for himself, you know, now this this was too long. It was, I need to cut it. Another one that says it, it it needs to be finished within fourteen minutes. So, you know, have to cut it short and little notes to himself he would make on the side, which is, I mean, for me, it was really lovely to see because I'd seen his handwriting before. Those days, uh, there was no, uh, there was no email. So the communications were always through letters. So uh, this handwriting was a very a great joy for me to see. Yeah. Next. So the, uh, the now, you know, he collect, he covered such a wide spectrum of subjects. So I thought that it might be a good idea to, to, to kind of club them together. So I've clubbed them together in five different sections, which was one was on just on bird watching, uh, and uh, next about different seasons in summer and the migrants, what happens over the over the year, uh, the birds that you can see at different time. Then the third chapter is about education about birds, how to learn about birds, their importance, how to study them, and all that. And then there's a whole chapter on uh, endangered species, birds, you know, which are all, uh, which have some, which have some, which have actually gotten extinct, like the pink-headed duck, and uh, about birds that are on the verge of extinction, almost like, like the, um, like the great Indian bustard, which is getting very, very, uh, very, very endangered today. And in the last chapter, he talks about nature, general nature, ecology, and even he talks about some wild animals, which is very interesting. He talks about uh, many animal species, which are of great interest to the kind. Yes, next, please. 
So just to go back a little bit onto his life, uh, his life, uh, you know, he was actually born into a very prosperous family. He belonged to a huge, very large family that lived in, 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 in Bombay. It was called Bombay those days. And uh, he, he was actually an orphan and he was brought up by his, uh, and he had, he, he and his nine siblings, uh, eight siblings were often, often. He was the youngest of nine. And they, they, their parents passed away when he was the youngest, was only three years old. So the entire lot were adopted by a very, um, by their uncle and aunt who didn't have children of their own. So he grew up uh, with them. And he grew up with all these cousins and siblings and, you know, he had a, actually he had a lovely childhood, obviously, because he had a lot of uh, um, people to, to be with. And, and they were shikars because they were, you know, they were this kind of sophisticated family those days. And many of them were civil servants and in the legal department and they were business people. And those days it was the fashion and also it was a done thing to, to go hunting along with the British or by themselves with the royal families, they would all go hunting. And, uh, and then bird shooting also was quite a hobby those days. So his uncle presented Salim Ali when he was about 10 years old with a gun, air gun. And uh, so he, was, he loved it. And uh, Salim Ali himself was a shikar. He, he shot, he himself says he has shot bears, he has shot various animals and he shot a lot of birds. Uh, so with this little air gun, he was shooting sparrows, a little child. And this is from a comic book. Can you believe a comic book has come out about Salim? It's, uh, I, I love looking at it. So uh, see if you can find it. It's a lovely comic book. Amachitra Katha, I think. And so he shot birds around in his neighborhood and used to shoot sparrows. And uh, he became interested in sparrows, uh, not because they were <laughs> uh, to shoot them and he would take them to the cook and get them all get them fried up for a snack, apparently. That's what he says. So he said, on one occasion, he, that's what he says of himself. This, I'm quoting this. On one occasion of my, one of my rare occasions of successful murder, he says he didn't often succeed in, in killing them. I noticed that the victim, which was intended to be a common house sparrow, bore a curious yellow patch on his throat. So yeah, next please. So this was actually the, uh, yellow throated sparrow, which is now um, been renamed, of course, the chestnut shouldered petronia. So when he found this bird, uh, he showed it to his uncle, and the uncle said, Yeah, this looks different. Why don't you take it to BNHS? So he took it to BNHS, and uh, Millard was there, Dr. M Mr. Millard, and he identified as this yellow throated sparrow. And so he says, From then onwards, my, my um, interest really blossomed. He suddenly became hooked to the idea of birds and he loved, uh, he, 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 his fascination for birds began. And study birds, he wanted to study birds seriously, but in India, there was just no way. The India ornithology, in, I mean, look at this, it in the early, early century. There was zoology, botany, all these subjects were there, but ornithology was not a subject at all. So he decided to go to, um, Berlin University, where he studied, and this is very, very inspirational teacher called Professor Irwin Straisman, who uh, taught him um, uh, the real techniques of bird watching. Yeah, please, next. Yeah, so he says, no doubt Berlin was a, a turning point in my life, and I was able to uh, learn properly the te ontological techniques. Uh, and then he also found that when he was in the West, when he was in Europe, that people, that ordinary people were very interested in birds. And uh, uh, it became it was, an odd, it was a gentle pastime. He found that so many people used to go out bird watching, and he wanted to bring that into India. He said that in India it's not there, and he really uh, wanted to popularize uh, in India uh, bird watching as a hobby. And I'm talking about the early, early, uh, you know, early parts of like uh, 19, uh, 1930s, 1940s. He was 19. He was there. He, he was there. He came back in 1930 from Berlin. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So then I'm talking a little bit about his life and how he, he, he brings his life experience into his talks. So now when he came back to India, he didn't have a job, but he decided to just do a lot of ontological surveys. 
So he, he just took on expeditions and he was supported by BNHS as well as he was supported by royal families, he was supported by other, support, other, other uh, benefactors. And uh, so he went to you know the Cochin Ontological Survey of Travancore in Cochin and he camped out like this with his wife. He was married then. And uh, yeah, so he, he collected, he, those were collecting specimens. Yeah, yes, please, yeah. And so many adventures he had. He went on camelback, he went on elephant back, he went on boats, and he went you know, east, west, north, south of the country. He went everywhere. And he that is how that is how he plowed all this uh, knowledge into his books and into his talks. You know, he went to the marshes of uh, Ranav Kutch, he went to Chilika Lake and Western Ghats, everywhere. Yeah, next please. And then he also went to Sikkim with Lok Wan Tho, who was, a, who was a very great friend of his and a benefactor, a Singapore businessman who uh, gave him uh, a lot of uh, you know, donations to his, for his research studies. And they also became great friends and very amusing. If you read his, uh, uh, he's written about birding in Sikkim, about birds and animals in Sikkim he's written about. And in, I mean, or rather he talked about, he's talked about them in, this, in his radio talks. And uh, it's a very amusing uh, uh, incident he talks about on his expedition with Lo Kwan to, to Sikkim. Yeah, please. But his, you know, uh, his primary interest was really in, in he started off, or let me say his, one of his deep interests was in the Baya weaver bird. And he did so many studies of the Baya weaver bird with his students, by himself, and uh, that, that is repeated a lot in his in his radio talks, because these talks were all meant for different audiences. So when I, when you put them all together, but one finds a lot of repetitions because he he wants to convey the same thing to different different people as well. So he talks about how brilliant the Baya weaver bird is, and how it is able to you know and and how it times its its nesting to the timing of the of the of the leaves when the leaves of that particular grass grow and, and all. So th that's where he, he captures the interest of his, of his listeners and his readers. He, so, and he conveys his fascination by telling you all these things. And here he's found this exceptionally long uh, nest. So he's taken a picture of that, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen nests like that. Yes, please. Yeah. Then he talks about economic honesty. Now the favorite subject of his, favorite subject, economic ornithology. He talks repeatedly about this and, uh, you know, about their birds' role in pollination and in seed dispersal and in insect pest control and fertilizing water bodies and how they directly it impacts, impacts agriculture and how they, they contribute hugely by the insect pest control to agriculture how they contribute to forestry by seed dispersal and how they contribute to, again, to agriculture by uh, fertilizing water bodies. This picture of Vedan Tangan. Yeah, please. And another favorite is his birds of prey. He says that birds of prey, you know, he says, again, I'm quoting him here. He says, uh, their senseless destruction deprives agriculture and forestry of the service of some of the man's staunchest allies in the ceaseless battle against the fecund tribe of rats and other scourges like the locust. So now we've had so many locust uh, uh, invasions and we, I'm sure all of us remember hardly a year or two ago, there was a huge locust invasion in Gujarat. And all the, he, he emphasized at time and again that these birds of prey not only can control rats and mice, uh, which are huge agricultural pests, but as well as locusts and other insect agricultural pests as well. Cranes are a big destructor, are, are really important in controlling locusts. Yeah, please. So um, he, again, uh, the nice good thing about Dr. Salim Ali, and one of the many good things about him, of course, is that he, he, he wouldn't deny anything. So he didn't deny that birds are also agricultural pests and that they can consume huge amounts of grain and they can be destructive to fruits, orchards, they can be very destructive uh, to growing plants. So he says that. He says, admittedly, this is going to be a very difficult task to 
And he sympathized with farmers, not only about birds in their field, but also about animals, you know, elephants and wild boar and deer, they come and, you know, decimate uh, agricultural crops. So he sympathized with farmers, he said, we have to address this. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot say as overly, we cannot, he completely warned against total destruction or elimination of a species. And he brings out uh, examples from other, other countries where they eliminate species of birds and uh, he said that we should not do, but we should control them. It's a challenge, but it's, so he says over here, look at the different wording he uses. In the beginning, he talks about himself as a, you know, clownish character who is like, like a garage mechanic and look at the strong language he uses here. He says, admittedly, this is going to be a very difficult task that is, but I believe it is not impossible. If we can find the right approach, we have never really tried enough, but devising a realistic strategy is a challenge. So it's a strategy for preventing this kind of destruction by birds and animals and encouraging the, the, the good aspects of all these creatures. Yeah, please. Then his another fascination, of course, he was, was about migration bird, migrant birds. And I think in India, he was the pioneer in, uh, you know, getting bird ringing going and uh, satellite, uh, even putting little satellite uh, uh, receptors on birds. And, and through this bird ringing program, he was able to uh, find out the migratory routes of so many birds that come into India for, for their, for their uh, winter migration. And not only that, he actually physically went. He went to the nesting sites. He wanted to see the nesting sites. Of these, uh, of, these, of these birds. So he crossed the Himalaya, he went on a trip to Tibet to see the, uh, to see the nesting sites of uh, migrant birds here, the Bahid goose and uh, the, uh, the others, and the uh, shell duck, Radhi shell duck, which is nesting in, in Tibet. He went there and he wanted to see it for himself, Lake Manasarovar. Yeah, please. Then he talks about Indian species, I said before, and uh, he, uh, and the funny thing, he doesn't talk about vultures because what he talks about vultures is really interesting. So he says, uh, in one of his talks, he says, if you just look up at the sky, you'll see vultures soaring in the sky any time of the year, any time of the day. And look at the difference now. So if you read these, uh, or if you, if, you, if you listen, if you, you can't listen anymore, but if you can read the scripts of these talks, there's so much to learn you know, from his experience and from what's happening now. You look up at the sky, there's not a single vulture. So this is what has happened. Again, he talks about the bear in Kashmir. He actually recommends culling. Can you believe it? Because he said the bears are so prolific in Kashmir that they are killing the hangul uh, fawns. And hangul is declining because of the bears. So I, he recommended culling of the bears those days. It's actually, it sounds shocking right now. But those days, uh, I mean, the 40s and 50s, this was kind of an accepted uh, situation. But and look at the contrast now. These, bird, these bears are, are so endangered now, so endangered. So we, we learn a lot from this. Yeah, please. So this was Salim Ali's vision, his uh, great, uh, you know, um, his contemporaneous, his, uh, uh, even at that, even those days, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, he knew he, he was able to project uh, what, what the situation is going to be. And he emphasized not only that he can emphasize not only study of birds, but the connection between nature and humans, their economic value, their physical value, their spiritual values, all this he talks about. And he also says that what is now required is the understanding of the fact that human ecology is an integral part of nature conservation. And all who take a global, take a view of life on earth must realize that man's future cannot be considered separately from other forms of life. Now, this is the great uh, vision of this man and uh, how he, you know, even though he, as a scientist, he, uh, he, uh, he promoted the, he uh, promoted and he advocated that, human ecology and ecology nature should be integrated and man and nature should grow together and live together uh, in harmony. So 
So friends, um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation now. And uh, so friends, um, uh, I after when I when I discovered or when I saw these tapes and I saw these scripts of all these talks, I I felt it really had to be shared. That it cannot be left in an archive. It had to be uh, shared and and uh, with as many people as possible. So I decided that yes, let us put it together and bring it to the publication. And I'm very delighted that uh, Permanent Black, the publisher, he himself, Rukun Advani himself, is a is a bird watcher. So he's published earlier some of the, uh, Salim Ali's works. And uh, so he agreed to this. And I hope it, the message of Salim Ali reaches more people through this publication. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Mrs. Gandhi. Um, we are open for uh, Q&A, but there are some comments in chat. There are no questions yet. Uh, Mr. Vasant Rajan, thanks you for your tremendous effort. And he's awaiting his copy from uh, BNHS. That's also what Ambika says. Uh, Mr. Vasant Rajan also wants to know if a digital book would be available. And Banu is grateful for a wonderful presentation. And actually, on a personal note, I really wish when I mean, you brought Salim Ali alive to all of us this morning. It's uh, on a personal note, I, I sadly read Follow the Sparrow when I was 49 and not when I was an impressionable young man. That's my lasting regret in life. And his sense of humor was what caught. I remember himself calling, uh, referring to himself as a rank seditionist during the freedom struggle. So his uh, language and sense of humor was something to be uh, learned from apart from bird watching, actually. So <laughs> let's see if there are any more questions here. Thank you. Again, Mr. Prem has uh, thanked you for a wonderful insight into a great man, as is Anita Arjundas, who also looks forward to uh, reading the book, Guhan 2 and Gayatri. So I think everybody wants to just get their hands on the book. No, no <laughs> question and answers. Well, and, enjoy as much as I did. I really enjoyed it greatly. And, and uh, yeah. And the proceeds are all going to go to BNHS. So it's also going to go in for conservation. Proceeds for the purchase of this book will all go to BNHS. Actually, it's it's also it's also a personal. I mean, forgive me for being personal, but uh, I wanted to, uh, I benefited from a fellowship from the Salim Ali. Uh, it is called the Salim Ali Lokwanto Fellowship, which was being given out to MSc students. So when I was an MSc student, I, I benefited from this fellowship. So. The proceeds of this are going back into another conservation uh, program of BNHS, and that is my expression of gratitude to uh, Dr. Salim Ali on his and his a tribute to him on his 125th birth anniversary. My mother, so, are these broadcasts still available in audio form somewhere? You know, I it's I I really don't know. I think that is the next thing that BNHS has to pursue, and maybe any of us who know anybody in All India Radio, I tried to write to All India Radio. And to see, uh, you know, whether I could uh, hear any of these things, but they, nobody replied. I think I think one has to have a personal connection or actually go and sit there, which I was not able to do. All this entire thing was done during the uh, pandemic lockdown. It actually kept me going through the pandemic, you know, and this entire work was done digitally and uh, during the pandemic. So I couldn't go to All India Radio office. I would have loved to go to the Bombay All India Radio a station and see if they have any old records, but uh, that couldn't be done. So I think BNHS should do it, or even if if the Madras uh, station has, as Dr. As Mr. Sudhakar said, uh, Harry Miller's recording, maybe that could be an entry point. See if it can be done. So I think that's uh, that's all we have for Q and A. Uh, Vijay, I Vijay wanted you want to give a brief update on the coastal survey, but I don't see him in the talk uh, in the list of participants. Vijay, so I'm here. I'm here. I'm another Madras oh. Naturalist Society. Oh, great. Okay, hello. so I'll just... uh, hello. I have a question. Please read my chat message. Venkatesh. Yeah, one second. Uh, Banu. Okay, yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, Banu wants to know if uh, Dr. Salim Ali's hand. Written field notes are still preserved um, somewhere, BNHS or somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. 
actually the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library Delhi in Delhi uh, has got has got all the original papers. They've got all the physical in the physical form they have it, and they have uh, piles of uh, files of them. And uh, BNHS has got uh, digitized versions. They've digitized a lot of it. So all these uh, scripts of all these talks were um, all uh, digitized, or rather, they were photo. They were they were like scanned. So I could see it looking like the original, but it was a scan. And they may be having, I don't know if they have scanned his diaries, but there are a lot of field notes which are scanned. You, you can get a lot of his field notes which are scanned. And, oh. and if, you permission, if you're a researcher and you get permission to go to the Nehru Memorial Museum and Library, they may give you, they may give permission uh, they gave me permission long ago because I was doing some work on that. So they do give permission to go through the original file as well. Okay. So even before I hand over to you, just one final, some uh, Mr. Chandran asked if this recording will be available. Yes, on uh, the MNS YouTube channel. Umesh will do it in a couple of days. On which note, you, want, you can uh, take over, please. I will just briefly... Um tell you about how our coastal project is going. Um, so we completed our zone one. Zone two, we are collaborating with Anamala University uh, under the mentorship of Dr. Bragadishwaran. And they have been helping us doing the field surveys. We are documenting three things, biodiversity, local knowledge, and threats. Um, zone two and three is from Puducherry to Nagapatnam. And, and a quick kind of species list from here. So in uh, uh, Puducherry, um, field sites surveyed were Pondi, Marina, and Annan oil. And we got 32 species of bivalves, 32 species of gastropods, and five species of crustaceans. This was one field visit to each place. Mailada Durai, which was is actually partitioned in Nagapatnam you know, a couple of years back, it wasn't so. It was an inland, not a coastal state. We got uh, 48 species of bivalves, 64 species of gastropods, 17 species of crustaceans. And Kadalu, we got 37 species of bivalves, 53 species of gastropods, and 15 species of crustaceans. That's our biodiversity checklist. And we are yet to kind of get the data, look at it, uh, analyze, and so on. Um, hopefully, our zone four will take place in December. Uh, planning of that is going on, which is right from the end of Park Bay up till Kanyakumari. Yes. We look forward to some lovely posters from you, Yuvan. Yeah, thanks. So I think that's about it. So Sudhakar, sir, do you want to just uh, wind it up with a word of thanks? Uh Am I, am I audible now? Or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, that, that is a wonderful presentation by uh, Tara Gandhi. We are actually uh, taken back to meeting uh, Dr. Salim Ali. Uh, so this is uh, a wonderful opportunity for MNS to uh, hear from uh, Tara Gandhi uh, her personal experiences. Probably I would request Tara Gandhi uh, because she has uh, had uh, such a close association uh, with Dr. Salibari at a later uh, meeting to recount uh, some of the uh, incidences, uh, recount her incidences uh, that happened uh, during her uh, bird watching uh, trips, probably with Dr. Salibari. Uh, so I wish to thank everybody who attended this. And as uh, everybody else, I am looking forward to reading the book. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I really enjoyed being with all of you. Thanks for listening. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.